Am I on? It was the wrong song in the end because we lost the uh, connection to the real internet and I was, uh, you were in the old one, in the one I wanted to show to you. But anyway, thank you Transmediale for bringing me on stage and thank you for accompanying me on this short journey through the pages of one terabyte of kilobyte H archive. Archive collection of 100,000 of Jewish cities pages. I'll be back into the archive again in the end of the talk. I hope you enjoyed my VJ and skills and get a glimpse of how my days in archive really look like. Of course, not, amateur, not all amateur pages have music on them, and in general, not all of them are so bright and dynamic. But since this talk got a performance status, I on purpose selected pages that were seen as a performance by their creators. Um, that sites that were built to catch your attention, to amaze you with its multimedia performance, to be more than just a page. And another remark I want to make at this point is the sites I'm showing to you are not as old as one can think. Most of them were last updated in September, October 2003, some even later. This is the time period that, where I am now in my research, in my alternative timeline. It is the end of 2003 right now. Um, yeah, in, in, in 2012, <clears throat> I, I started with looking at pages last updated in 1995, and day by day went forward almost in the same speed as normal calendar does but with somewhat one and a half delay, a decade delay. Is 15 years a long time ago? Some who count internet years and dog years would say that it is like a century. But let's look at it from another angle. Let's measure internet time in online categories, in updates, for example. There is a person in this audience who updates his web page once in five years. So for him, 15 years ago would be just three updates ago. So 2003, for somebody here, is just three updates away. But jokes aside, these are not 90s pages. They are our century. 2003, it's friends and MySpace are already there. Live Journal is already five years old and almost dead. Google is already there and in full power. Some months still Facebook. It is after September 11. Putin is already a president. Obama is already a senator from Illinois. They are not ancient. Actually, you can hear music in a wave format more often than media files. Almost no scanned photos, but pics taken with digital camera. Yeah, no selfies yet, but less and less people take pictures of themselves in front of CRT monitors. Climate change is not the hottest topic yet, but the snow, as you can see, is already missing. I think everyone in the audience is older than these pages. At least you were born before they were abandoned by their creators. You had chance to see them, but I'm sure you didn't. Me too. Though in the end of 2003, I was already consciously and intensively looking for them. The reason is they were pushed back from the attention or erased. It was not some sort of evolution or natural development that would make people stop building their personal websites. Professional, professionalization of faster internet that you could hear as reasons for amateur pages to die out could have become the reasons for the opposite, for more bright, rich, and long tradition of people building their cyber homes themselves. I think we have severe internet connection trouble. I am not connected to anything. <laughs> Can somebody help me, bring me back online? <laughs> There is a cable here, but mm -hmm. 
Vielen Dank. Ne? Okay, the part, I can do the part from the... Um, uh, but it's really, uh, would be really pity. I, I can start from my computer, but can somebody check that, uh, please, that there is internet connection? Let's imagine that we are online. At least I made it on my computer. Yeah, so what did I say? For more bright, rich, and long tradition of people building their cyber homes themselves. There was uh, no natural course of events. On contrary, the idea that you should invest time into building your corner of cyberspace was mercilessly suppressed by hosting and server providers and fathers of the internet. Also important to understand that there was no 2.0 moment in the history of the web that left certain content and formats behind, as well as there was no time in the history when building your home was celebrated and acknowledged by opinion leaders. Tim Berners-Lee said more sarcastic words about vernacular web than Mark Zuckerberg and made it as early as 1996, the year we usually see as a golden age of amateur pages. Please acknowledge that people who built them homes, houses, cottages, places, realms, crypts, lairs, worlds, 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 and other dimensions were challenging the architecture and the protocols, protocols in figurative, not technical meaning of this word. Users hijacked the first home page of the browser and developed this concept into another direction. A user building, moving in, taking control over territory was never a plan. It was a subversive praxis also in 1995. I have a message for those who decided to make their web pages in 2020. What you make is a statement, is an act of emancipation. You make it to continue 25 years old tradition of liberation. Don't see it as a nostalgia. Don't participate in creating nostalgia trends. There is also nothing to be nostalgic about, unfortunately. Webmasters and their production were easy target to ridicule, not in the last place because of their style, and professionals, designers, and evangelists really used the chance ridiculing, uh, discrediting, exposing clean styles and templates, usurpating the right to make design decisions. They succeeded. They protected the internet from wrong color combinations, annoying background sounds from marquees and blinking, but at, on the long term, it was the beginning of the end of web design itself. The rhetoric of alienation that design expert practiced in 1996 was picked up by IT giants a decade later. To quote Vincent Flanders' tweet from four years ago, in 2016, web design is what Google wants it to be. Even more true in 2020, unfortunately. But let's not forget Flanders' own contribution to this process. As the author of legendary web pages that sucked 1997 and son of web pages that sucked 2002, uh, uh, which was full with articles page by page, where he was humiliating websites that were too bright, too loud, and too confusing. There is no web design and web designers anymore. There are graphic designers and developers again. There is a well-paid but sad job of front-end developer. For me, as a net artist and new media design educator, this development is bitter because it is death of meaningful profession and design and sign of disappearance of the medium that I consider to be the best of what happened to uh, co connected computers, internet, and all of us. To prevent it and also to see potential of web user properly, among of other things, one should make an attempt to see the history of web in its continuity.
which is not easy task because we are always confronted with revolutions, with binary time before, after, with web 1.0, web 2.0, <coughs> desktop, mobile, flat, material. My research is focused on the process and on, the, on web users. I try to tell their history through their relations with the medium. My observations allow me to operate with non-binary categories and distinguish transitions that are more productive and meaningful. For example, the, stick, the history, in my opinion, can be called, can be, can be told, um, written in three use, from under construction through update to upload. Under construction is building the web, its excitement, its promise. Update is very long story of, uh, of stories filled with dramas, stories of love and hate relations with the web, not having time for the web, trying to find this time. The myth of IRL, update generation or type of websites that live that have relations with their webmasters. They tell the story of people looking for right mechanisms to stay visible, to stay interesting on one side and on another side, to keep in pace with software development. Finding place, is finding the balance in between IRL and cyber life. Upload is a way out. Is reducing your involvement to feeding the forms with photos, texts, or other types of user-generated content. And another development I clearly distinguish and would want you to see is a path from my to me. Again, my is not one 2.0 and me 2.0. It was a continuous process. I would meet, need more complex visualization for it. The process of limiting and challenging the role of a person online and also the story of collaboration, of people accepting, people trading what could be my for what could be me. In some minutes I will be back um, to the origins of the decay from my to me, but first some words about the current moment and, and or maybe one more way to think about the history of the web users uh, and their relations with the medium would be to see, uh, to see it through their relations with the links, uh, like from being the, being the node, node, being a portal, to uh, closing your website because search engine doesn't see you. But it would be a quite a complex uh, diagram, maybe next time. But so I will just tell the story about this moment, about where we are now. And this semester I teach a project, go as deep or stay as shallow. It is a quote from Joshua Quitness Manifesto from New, New Journalism, an optimistic text published on Hot Wired uh, in 1995, where Quitner called journalists of 25 years ago not to be afraid of making links, to immerse in the world of hypertext and hyperimages out there, outside of your text, or publishing platform. I have very young students this semester. I knew I would be the first to tell them about the difference in between internet and World Wide Web, history of hypertext and hyperlink, values of end-to-end -end and treasures of P2P, and the importance of breaking out of wall gardens, importance of not obeying to one link Instagram allows you. I was prepared to start from the basis. What I was not prepared to is that students would ask me, what do you only mean with one link that Instagram allows to its users? Where is this link? They did not know about the link and they didn't see it and they were not missing anything. I was trying to fire up a resistance against cruel policy of Instagram, but achieved the opposite. I made the Instagram even more generous in their eyes. When I told it to an older student of mine, with old in this case, I mean she already had conversations with me about links, peers, and E to E, some semesters ago and made herself some great projects, she said that with all due respect to all the links I made, Instagram's policy of not allowing links is great. This helps you to stay concentrated and see only what she wanted to see. It's not a story about stupid young people. It is a story about computer users of all generations. So often we hear and say that things change very fast. I don't know what is fast and what is slow, but what is clear for me is that adaption of computer users' mindset keeps with this pace. First you stop making links, then you're stopping following ones made by others, then you ask, what's the link? 
Computer users accepted that making links is not their business. Instagram's one link uh, in bio is not a question of amount of the links, but the fact that deciding on making hypertext is not a prerogative of the users. This page from 1995, not just a page, but quite a significant one. Uh, it's uh, the oldest in our archive. Uh, and uh, another great thing I could uh, trace its creator. It's not just some Bruce uh, who is testing how to make the first web page, but Ganesh Kumabanka, quite a name in Southeast Asian world, among other things he owns in Malaysia and around. Um, it was he or his company who bought Friendster in 2009. In 1995, he was 16 years old and modified a sample page made by another guy, David Bonnet, founder of GeoCities, who was 40 at the moment, but has maybe only some months more experience with the web than Ganesh Kuman Bankach. The page Ganesh made is almost identical to Bonnet's sample, almost in the same user peak. And this sample suggested to the users signing to this platform that two things are important, <clears throat> to be under construction and to have <clears throat> links to other sites on the web. <clears throat> As you can see, <clears throat> users take this call seriously and also outside um, outside of the template, outside of the sample, of course. There are sites that help you find people, sites that help you find jobs, sites that help you find other websites. This, this is a quote for home sweet home, uh, design manual, and what they mean, not that uh, they don't mean search engines, that this, they mean that making links can be a valid reason for you to start to make your website. You may be not an expert in anything, you, don't, uh, you are not a fan of anything, but you can link and you can link to search engines and the links are us, as you can see in the title of this screenshot. Hyperlinks aren't just a skeleton of the web. There is eyes, a path to its soul, a path to its soul. Iranian blogger Hossein Dekarshan wonderfully said in 2015 post on Medium, the title of it was the web we have to save. <clears throat> Derekshan spent six years in prison for his posts online. He was released, he went back online and saw terrible Facebook that is not letting him link properly and control the presentation of his text. And he was absolutely right in his critique. At the same time, what was shocking for me in his text, uh, it, it is from five years ago, then I realized that in his memories, WordPress was the paradise for links and golden age for hypertext. And, that, and this was the web we have to save. Though, uh, in my memories, in my chronology, WordPress is exactly the uh, platform that started to take away users' control over the links. It is exactly WordPress that should be blamed for disrespect to hypertext, as it filled the web with zombie links. Yeah, we know the answer. The users of pre-publishing tools forget or adapt or accept very fast. Similar to false memories uh, about WordPress is current MySpace nostalgia, namely the part where people recalled their time on the platform as time when they were coders. U.S. scholar Kate Miltner presented her research about it last year conference, the web that was at Amsterdam University. I could not believe my ears when I heard about it because I remember in 2007, I did write a lot about MySpace's platform that took HTML source code away from the people. But of course, true, when you compare MySpace of, what, of that time with whatever or even MySpace of today, you say, wow, I was a coder. I could copy and paste glittering text code. I could decide if sparkles are purple or pink. I ask from the audience if in some years teenagers who are now on Instagram will recall 2019 as paradise, as free web were in place when they were coders. Can it be that people who are on Instagram now will be nostalgic about freedoms they had? Of course, Alex Gecker of Instagram University shouted from his seat, thank you Instagram for allowing to upload. 
Indeed, holy times, you could decide yourself on a peak. We will be recalling 2019 as time when we could post images ourselves. Good old times. Remember Instagram where you could post an image. Remember Google that allowed to type your search request. We had Twitter. You could unfollow people. Yes, 2020, there were browsers that had a location bar and you could type in an address of a site. What address bar, website you could type? Was there a sort of a typewriter? Adapting, forgetting, delegating, and delegating. I left you stare at this link of Christmas tree for, uh, for quite some time now. It was on purpose. I hope you got curious. What is this star on the top? What, on, on the top? Where does it link? Is it Microsoft, Apple, Yahoo? No. It is author's own complete solution to Rubik's Cube in Java applet. His invention, his pride, and his right to make the link to it more prominent than links to IT giants. I will try if we are back online. Sorry? Okay. But there is something going on. There should be sound there as well. Hmm. No sound, but then I will just continue to talk. <clears throat> anyway. Um, you look now at a selection of uh, uh, doc websites from one terabyte of kilobyte H archive. There are 700 of them, some more other less spectacular. Many made in memory of docs, many to celebrate new puppy. And there are some that found especially stunning. I tag them as doc webmasters. And you know, you know you, some dogs claim they made their web pages themselves. <laughs> and you people who are older than these pages, you know that it's not true. But for how long this knowledge will be here? Chances that someone ever heard about web page made by people themselves are getting smaller every month. At the same time, chances that your dog, cat, or hamster does not need you to share its pictures and sounds online are getting higher every day. I am sure that if um, uh, that someone looking at it in 10 years and seeing this uh, screenshot wouldn't be surprised by dogs showing off their pages or posts. Theoretically, some sort of Alexa would be able to do it already today, automatically photographing your pets, streaming it live, translating it, barking into words and whatever. And uh, that's why I stay here to tell you that these dogs were not dogs but people who spent few weekends learning how to make a web page and it was so exciting and so fun that they also made them for their dogs. People, not dogs, not artificial intelligence, not UX were making decisions about URLs, links, navigation, layout, color palettes and content. Webmasters build homes, worlds, and universes, but also outside of, oh, sorry, also outside of intergalactic ambitions. This war, their worlds. They strongly push the concept of something being mine. First person possessive determiner my got a very strong meaning. My because I built it, I control its presentation. My interests. Uh, my obsessions, my competences, my Stephen King, my corn, my page for Sandra Bullock, my Eminem, somebody else Eminem, <laughs> my tattoo, my Arlanda Bloom, your Arlanda Bloom, Martin's Milen Ferme, Julius John Malkovich, 
Jacob's pictures of Pamela Anderson. They are Jacob's because he scanned them and put them online. It's my space, my world, my universe for Leo. And my territory without him. <laughs> this is Patricia's Zena, but not only because she is her fan. It is a page about Patricia's dream world where she is Zena. And it is a very important dimension of my alternative myself, alternative space where I can be someone else, someone I want to be. Emphasis on my. Um, growing idea that things can belong to person who wrote HTML code or scanned pictures or collected something was unprofitable and dangerous. Today users put a gate or a door on their page and what tomorrow? Sorry, let's stay for a And what tomorrow? Will they think that uh, the files behind them belong to them? Uh, or maybe they get an idea that data is not exposed or sold. Today they change the color of the browser, of the scroll, scroll bar, adapting it to the theme of the imaginary world. And what tomorrow? They can get an idea to install a browser extension or to write one. Through the second part of the 90s, service providers took many actions to reduce and restrict. Rewriting TOS by rewriting terms of services, by, making, uh, take, by taking away frameworks, not developing tools that would make it easier to update and communicate, for example, guest books or editors or web rings, and developing tools that would theoretically require less effort. Also promoting an idea of IRL, of some real life that you were allegedly missing than making your web page. But the smartest and the most effective move the industry made, apart above mentioned measures, was to push people from my to me, to introduce forms that would motivate people to see themselves as the main and then the only content of what they do online. Just me, me, I am me and there is no one else like me in the rest of the entire world, all about me and more. John, Kevin, Becky, Jake, Jason, Steve. Next to motivation to promote your me that came from manuals and articles that was uh, some that were motivating, there were some smaller, almost technical steps made by providers. For example, personal page blue. Uh, as soon as Yahoo bought GeoCities, they replaced sample pages with templates. It is 1999, personal page blue template is the best known. What you see here is not only original design, but also original text. People registered their profiles, but didn't care to change it, text removed. Picture exchange, text exchange, but not a picture. Another about me classic. One more is Mark Zuckerberg trying GeoCities three months before Facebook got operational. I know that, you know, it's not truth, but I still want to believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and look. The next screen shock is almost identical, but pay attention to the address line. The first one is still a neighborhood, the second is a vanity profile, also a change introduced by Yahoo, another measure to make people think in me, not my categories. Recently at one H terabyte workshop, uh, a participant asked if it would uh, make sense to visualize this rise of web by arranging the pages according to the position of about me button in the navigation menu and see how it developed in time. I think it is a bit of simplification and would object algorithmic approach anyway, but what I saw with my own eyes would confirm that about me button indeed made a career from the bottom to the top. In the later history, by the way, uh, Facebook history, we could remember the switch to timeline that was a push in the direction of me to tell the story of your life, to immerse in your own history. 
And I think it would be also possible to pin the culmination of transition from my to me. It was um, uh, very well highlighted or even pushed by the person of the year 2006 cover of Time magazine. You, me, was praised and celebrated and left in front of the monitor to make selfies and post them on channels that would go bankrupt if their users wouldn't produce and produce for free. Where my was dangerous, me was perfect. Me is cheap, me is easy to control, me is easy to channel. Me is slave of its, slave of its own reflection. Me is slave of the platforms that make the reflection glossy. Me is data, me is data closest to metadata. This makes me just perfect to satisfy advertisers and to say neural, say it neural networks. What can be done? How to reclaim my? Don't collaborate. Start with the small steps. Don't post your texts where you are not allowed to turn it into hypertext. Don't post your pictures where you can't link them to whatever you like. Don't use the, uh, content management systems that turn your GIFs into JPEGs. Don't use hashtags. Don't accept algorithmic timeline. To make it short, make a web page and link to others who still have one. Leaving monopolies and or using alternatives is easy to suggest, I know. And many of us made the first step, created a page on neocities.com or Tilde Club, or even bought a super glued kit and hosted their home pages at their actual homes, supported reclaim hosting projects. But to quote developer and passionate Tilde John Bell, how can we make something like this last longer than a sunrise? It's a very good question, and I think that leaving the platforms and meeting somewhere else is not enough, or not even the biggest deal. The challenge is to go away from me, from the idea that you are the center of your online presence. Don't take this artificial and imposed role into the new environments. It will poison and corrupt the best of the initiatives. There should be sound now. What's happening? There is sound, but we can't hear it. Is there something I can do to...
Thank you. There are no questions, <laughs> no answers. A little announcement.